What is going on, Evan Nation? John Evan here with Howard Bender. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Game Day Playbook Preview Show. Today, we are looking at the seven-game main slate because it is 4th of July here, Howard. Uh, we are recording before the 4th of July slate kicks off. It's a 105 Eastern Time uh, main slate here over on DraftKings. So everybody's eating their hot dogs, grilling their hamburgers, you know, having a cookout, enjoying the day, and uh, getting a little DFS baseball in on as well. Happy 4th of July to everybody out there. I hope you guys uh, stay safe, enjoy the baseball games, and as John just said, barbecue, eat lots, enjoy some beach time, some much-needed time away for sure. Um, and, yeah, listen, man, if you can make a little bit of money playing some DFS, then why the hell not? So thank you for tuning in here. Smash the like and subscribe button. Get in on it right now, please. It's a free way to show your appreciation. If you want to show a monetary way to show your appreciation, well, that's fantasyalarm.com slash win. Promo code let's go gives you the uh the 50% off your uh first month uh of your all pro subscription. And what are you getting in that first month? Oh, I don't know, maybe the fantasy football draft guide. The cheat sheets, instant access to me and John and the mm -hmm. whole crew. So, boom, that's the monetary way to say you love me. You want to say it for free, just smash that like button for us. Give us as many thumbs up as you can. In the meantime, Johnny, you ready to talk some baseball? I am. Uh, Christopher Sanchez is your highest priced starting pitcher on this slate on the road against Chicago Cubs at $9,000. Max Scherzer. 8,800 at home against the Padres. Bailey Ober gets Detroit. Uh, Nick Pavetta going up against Miami. Michael Kane gets Texas. Lively against the White Sox. Bassett against Houston. That's your AK and above uh, tier there. Again, AK is basically your top price pitchers here uh, with Sanchez at 9K being that. So um, of the group here, Howard, uh, who are some of your favorites? I mean, I guess not. the lean is going to be Bailey Ober going up against Detroit. Like, I just don't. Like, the Detroit bats are a mess right now. They're just a, a, an absolute hot mess. And while Bailey Ober has not been uh, perfect, right, he's been solid for his last couple of starts. What does he have, like, three straight quality starts? Or yeah, did he miss really a good. sixth inning? Or... Yeah, he had nine, ten, and oh, eight you got it up there right the now. last three games, yeah. All right, so perfect. Like, I'm looking at a guy like, like Bailey Ober going up against Detroit. Now, I mean, you know, three weak opponents, Seattle, yep. Oakland, and Oakland. Top two uh, highest pitch. strikeout teams against right-handed pitching, Howard. What's that? Top two highest strikeout rates against right-handed pitching, Seattle and Oakland. And he uh, had no problem, 9, 10, and 8 Ks in those three matchups. So. No. Um, Detroit right now against right-handed pitching, a 24.2% strikeout rate, 292 uh, weighted on base average. This is, uh, you know, on, on the season. So, mm -hmm. you know, Ober to me is probably the first guy. I love Christopher Sanchez. And and legit, like when I talked to to the Phillies GM with Jim Bowden, and we were like, you know, having the conversation, Sanchez was the name that kept popping, right? Yeah. Like they just kept talking about him. They loved him. I was, you know, heavily invested uh, as a result. And he, you know, he's had a couple of hiccups like any other pitcher does. But um, am I spending nine k on him against the Cubs in Wrigley on the Fourth of July? When he just threw a complete game shutout, like, <laughs> I don't know about that. Like, you know, to me, it's like that that's the time that you, you fade him the most. I mean, yeah, 16 shutout innings over his last two starts against Arizona and Miami. The Arizona one, I think, is more impressive. Arizona's a top three offense against left handed pitching. And, yes. uh, you know, 80 pitches are going to get through seven shutout innings. Uh, maybe even see, probably could have tracked to back to back complete games, honestly. Uh, if they were going to let him go any deeper there on that one. Um, I don't mind Max Scherzer here either. He got up to 77 pitches in that last start against Baltimore. Baltimore, pretty elite offense, five and a third inning, just two earned runs. Allowed the one homer. He's had four strikeouts in each of the two games. Again, five innings in each of those, not really uh, allowed to go much deeper. Pitch count jumped from 57 to 77. My thinking here is that maybe 90 pitches is a min. Maybe he has no uh, limitations on him now. $8,800 Max Scherzer going up against the Padres at home. I kind of don't mind that. Really? Like, all right. I mean, I, I can understand when you look at what he's, you know, his progression. Sure. But this, this isn't the Max Scherzer of old. And I'm looking at here uh, against right-handed pitching, San Diego Padres, 
331 weighted on base average, 18.3% strikeout rate. That's on the season. Sure. Um, over the last you know week, the Padres striking out less than 17% of the time, still plugging away with a 330 weighted on base average. Like it's not really, I mean, it's just not a lineup that I'm really kind of digging on, especially, you know, even in a home start here. Yeah. I would say those numbers are slightly inflated because I think they hung 20 runs on Boston over the weekend uh, on Friday and Saturday, they beat up Tanner Houck and they beat up. Right, But that's not, in, that's not inflating their overall for the entire season against right-handed pitching and sure. that's the fourth best team. No, I understand. I'm, I'm more so looking at it. I think the numbers that they had recently, now again, there's no Tatis obviously in that lineup right now. I think some of the recent numbers may have been inflated a bit by what they did over the weekend, last weekend against Boston. Um, and again, I'm a believer in the pitcher. I, I think Max Scherzer still has what it takes to be an elite starting pitcher. He just faced Baltimore. I mean, Baltimore is one of the better offenses in all of baseball. He fared pretty well, all things considered, against them while being on a pitch count limit. And against the Royals, he had 22 fantasy points going just five innings in that game as well. So I listen, I get it. If you have some hesitations, certainly don't have to go there. I just don't think that we're going to see much this this price tag on Max Scherzer for much longer while the uh, you know while he's uh, the limitations are removed from him. I'm sensing a bet, John. Okay, I'm sensing a Fourth of July bet. Alrighty. If I win, like let's figure out something with Scherzer. If I win, you have to eat a hot dog with whatever condiments I tell you to put on it. And now listen, I'm not going to be like, yeah, throw some, some peanut butter and some boogers on it. No, I'm going to be like, you know, I'm going to design you a hot dog, whether it's going to be a Chicago dog or something like that, sure. but you're going to have to eat a hot dog with condiments. <laughs> oh, uh, I guess we'll, we'll, uh, we'll sure. Sure. What's your, what do we think here? Quality what, start, quality start. Quality start works for me. Okay. What happens if uh, if he doesn't throw a quality start? Then what do I, don't I know. do? We'll figure out. We'll figure out. You, you, uh, have to eat, you have to eat some vanilla ice cream. I don't know. We'll figure it out, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have to just eat plain vanilla ice, like a vanilla cone. Just a plain vanilla it. cone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But sure, 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 sure. That works. Uh, so I got Scherzer for the QS here against San Diego. Um, I don't mind lively here either against the White Sox in a good spot for him. He's been pitching mm -hmm. really well of late. So, um, I think this, you know, again, for a, a seven game slate, pretty decent option of starting pitchers here. Um, Framber Valdez is 7,500. I know that he just got roughed up big time in his last start against the Mets here. What are your thoughts on him against Toronto? Um, I, you know, Toronto's not been a good team against left-handed pitching. I mean, throughout the season. Sure. Um, they're hot right now. Um, yeah, Vladdy came back to the lineup yesterday, right? He didn't miss. He only missed. He came out of the game. He was, yeah. he was yeah. playing. So, yeah, I mean, listen, I think that they're a, they're a hot team right now, but they haven't hit left-handed pitching well. And, yeah, I don't think we're ever going to get a price on Valdez like like we're getting right here. Right. It's kind of um, where I'm at as well. Do you not like Stroman? Um, not a strikeout guy. Not a strikeout guy in Yankee Stadium. Cincinnati has been a team that's hitting the ball really well lately as well. Um, this is a strong Ellie side. Um, Stroman's been fine, obviously, but you know, lately, four of the last five starts really haven't been like anything too special. So okay. um probably not. I mean, tie on against Philly is kind of interesting without Schwarber and Harper in the lineup. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that. So maybe maybe a dart throw there at seventy three. Yeah, I, I would I would dart throw it at Tyone, and I'm not like a huge Tyone fan to to use them there. But if I'm trying to save some money and I'm a little worried about uh you know Toronto going up against Valdez, then then yeah, I would probably pay down to to Tyone. So we're not going to use Cool Montes Maeda or Tyler here. So um, yeah, Frankie Montas revenge game narrative. Yeah, maybe. He could not pitch in Yankee Stadium for the one start that he made. <laughs> no, he could uh, not. I'm stacking <laughs> Yankees. Uh, so, yeah, I think Tyon's probably my my cheapest starter here. Uh, moving on over to the catcher position. Again, we generally just look for the cheapies. Uh, anyone sticking out to you? Uh, anybody sticking out to me? No. Yeah, I any any, any I mean, matchups you like? I, it's so upsetting that that David Fry is 5,400. Like Because <laughs> I, I, I would love targeting against Chad Cool. Yeah. Right. I really would. I mean, he's just, he's not good. And 
Uh, I don't mind that. It's just, it's so pricey for me. It's so, so pricey for me. Um, I would say that if I'm looking in the, uh, in the catcher realm here, it's definitely further down. I'm looking at like, you know, mm, eh, uh, could get yeah. Austin Wells here, 3,100 against Montes. Look at this. Yeah, I guess Wells would be somebody that I would target. This is this is not going to be good. If we don't use Tyone, I would use Garrett Stubbs if he's uh, if he's in there. He's a lefty bat. Sure. Oh. Um, could go against Maeda. You know, Vasquez is 26. Jeffers is 43. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Um, there you Danny go. Jansen's on the IL, so I would imagine Kirk against Valdez at 26 if you're not – you know, playing Valdez there mm -hmm. an option, but um, you've oh, talked about Maya a few times. You know, Sanchez has been good, obviously, but um, uh, catcher's pretty gross. I guess we'll have to see who Henry puts in this playbook because <laughs> Henry Wilson's on the playbook for, uh, for Thursday. We'll check out his playbook. You know what? I will look because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing some some work anyway on the fourth of July early in the morning for me. So I will look uh, at the lineups and I will post in Discord. Uh, who my favorite pay down catcher is. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll be on the lookout for that. You gotta be an all pro subscriber for that though. So make sure you go and slash win promo code. Let's go get in our discord, get Howard's value catchers for the day. Uh, first base <laughs> here, uh, certainly a bit more of an interesting position. Uh, Naylor against cool is $54, hundred dollars there. Um, you have Vladdy against Valdez. You can go uh -huh. speed, uh, steer. If you want to spend up against Stroman, um, I think I'm in on twins though. Give me the twins against Maeda here on uh, on the fourth of July. Carlos I Santana, can, I can 41. Do that. Carlos, yeah, I could definitely go with Carlos Santana there, no doubt. No doubt. Great. If is it, if you don't believe in lively, I also do like Andrew Vaughn. Sure, a lot of power lately out of him. Um, let's see, Nathaniel Lowe's 35. He had double two home runs the other day, right? I like that again to get that lefty righty matchup, sure. Um, lefties versus Bassett. Do we just keep dumping our toe in the well there? John Singleton at thirty one hundred dollars. I don't know, lately. John. Do we? He's been better lately. Three hundred eight thirty on OPS the last couple of games. Got a homer in there. Uh, might might take a peek if Singleton's in the lineup. Just going Bassett. You know, you know, we want Jordan. So uh, no, they don't I, have. A I know what I'm saying though. When you, when I look at, at Chris Bassett, I mean, he shut down the Yankees. He did. Right. And then in that back to back series against Boston, you and James both wanted to go back to the well and use those lefty Boston bats against Bassett. And and instead of going six innings with two earned runs, he went seven innings with two I earned know. runs. He no gave 12 hits. They just like couldn't capitalize on anything that they did there. So. 12 hits in two games, not 12 hits on one day. No, but he gave up seven and five. They still really yeah. weren't able to capitalize on it. So. They were not frustrating. I would agree with you. And then yeah, shout out the Yankees, uh, Soto there again. This team doesn't have many lefties either, so it's it's basically Jordan, right? Like they don't have they don't have Tucker. Uh, obviously, he's on the IL, so there aren't many lefties to throw out there. Um, you know, against Bassett, maybe Bassett ends up being an interesting contrarian play then in that in that instance, right? I'm um, at AK. So unless unless you think that John Singleton and uh, Jose Loperfido are you know all stars. I mean, I know at least Jordan is so. Um, anyways, second base, second base. All right. Top of the heap there. Uh, you know, I love, I love a, a little Altuve. Uh, if you're not going to go for Tyone, Stott is a lefty bat against him. Uh, I'm going to avoid Simeon because I mean, have, have, yeah. you, how, how cold has this dude been? I just put him in the fantasy baseball stock watch, which you guys can find, uh, over at fantasy alarm. You can find it right here on our YouTube page. I did a video for it. Simeon has been terrible. Yes. absolutely terrible. So I'm not going to look at, uh, at him here. I think I would probably, if I'm not going to target, if we're going to use Tyone, cause I feel like you're kind of leaning on the Tyone side, then your boy, Willie Castro going up against Maeda is probably where you want to live. Yeah. I, I mean, definitely his better split side has been against lefties, but recently he's just hitting everybody. So, Oh, David uh, Hamilton. Never mind. My bad. Yeah, Hamlin's cooled off a little bit, but he's he's fine at 44. India is kind of where I was looking. Um, 46 over the last 10 games for him. He was in your stock watch as well on the upside uh, for this yeah. one at 4K. That's like, so, last, that's like last week's news, dude. He wasn't yeah. in this week's. No, but I'm saying he was recently in your uh, in your stock watch on the upside. So uh, can you rock him there? Um, if Manuel Valdez is in the lineup, he's 37 against Tyler. 
Yeah, yeah. Gliber against Montas. I think sure. that's that's perfectly usable right there. Um, yeah, probably it though. Yeah, I'm looking further down. There's really nothing. Like you could always like it's always nice, and because it's going to be a day game, you just never know where they're going to go. But you know, for whatever reason, if you wanted to pay down to Kyle Farmer, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna have a two K shortstop potentially in the lineup here because the twins called up Brooks Lee today with oh, Royce man. Lewis on the IL. I'm so excited. So um, we may get Brooks Lee in the lineup here on the 4th of July against Kenta Maeda, uh, which we would for sure just plug in at 2K. Oh, uh, yeah, you have to. You even have though shortstop to. is a loaded position, like 2K Brooks Lee is pretty good. Top 40 prospect in baseball. Um Hitting the ball all over the place at AAA has some power. Dude, I've mentioned him the out. last the last two waiver wire articles. I'm like stash him, stash yep. him. Yep. Uh, it was only a matter of time before some soft tissue muscle went out on Bruce Lewis, and uh, Brooks Lee is now up. So, anyways, we'll go to third before we get short. Uh, third base has uh, Jose Ramirez and Rafael Devers. You can certainly uh, plug yeah. in and uh, enjoy either either or of those two plays. No problems there. Mm -hmm. um if I you're still... fa if you're fading scherzer machado's been hot lately sure 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 that's fine uh ba -ba -ba. josh smith against king king's been up and down at times he's 4k mm -hmm. yep yep noel v Marte. if you uh if you're not a stroman guy it's true i just like the 3800 because you know that there's power you know that there's power my it's concern with him was that he hit 140 at triple a and then he gets called up, and he has a three-hit game against Miles Michaelis, who's terrible. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't gotten a hit since. So, like, you know, like... Takes some time. You know, is he, like, is he, is he good? Is he not good? Because he wasn't good, and then he hasn't been good. So, like, um, no, we're plugging in Miranda. Miranda is a guy that's a righty that hits righties. Uh, mm -hmm. Just really good numbers for him. Uh, I know that uh, James Grande had him in all of his uh, uh, pick em articles for the Tuesday, or sorry, for the Wednesday slate, rather. Um, yeah, Miranda at $3,700 is one of my, my plugs for sure. Um, I don't really have anything else down here though. You don't have anything else? No. Nope. All right. Uh, shortstop has Brooks Lee. Like I said, he's $2,000. He's min price. So, you know, you, you can do that, but there are other guys. If you choose not to, uh, mm -hmm. this would be the spot to use Ellie Daylor Cruz. He's much better against righties and lefties. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I mean, listen, like that's the thing, because I'm kind of looking back and forth here. I know you're saying something about uh, Jose Miranda, but I'd say if we're going to use Brooks Lee, right, at short, then, yeah. we're, then, then we should then we should use either Devers or Ramirez at third. Sure. Like, yeah. I feel like that's the that's the that's the bill. That's the give and take. Yeah, it was, it was going to be that or to use that value to get Judge Soto against Montes. Which was, you know, a trend maybe I was I was looking to, towards uh, potentially doing there. Uh, obviously, Correa has been great, fifty two hundred dollars at short. Again, if you're looking to spend up, uh, mid tier options. I don't know, Sedan Rafaela, I guess is fine at thirty six. He homered the other day. <laughs> I this this slate is not as like tasty as as you'd think it would be, right? Yeah, seven Welcome games, July. you know, but you don't, you only have a couple of good like really good teams on it. So yeah, uh, for fantasy wise, at least, you know, they, when there's not the Dodgers every night, you know, or the Braves, you know, things like that, it's hard to always build lineups around. So uh, maybe not the Braves so much this year, but the Dodgers for sure. What a uh, weird main slate. All right. Outfield has obviously Judge Soto, your top two guys. Uh, Jaron Duran is $5,800. Well-deserved. He's averaging over 10 fantasy points a game this year. Uh, Quan is 56. Like, what are you, uh, what are you looking to do here? What am I looking to do in the outfield? Well, yeah. I mean, listen, yes. If I'm spending up, I'm going with the Yankees against Montas because he has been bad. I know you like Jordan as well. Sure. Uh, so I think that's fine. I'm still, listen, I, I get it, like what Steven Quan is doing. I just don't know if I can pay 5,600 for a guy who he's definitely like, you know, from a, 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 power extra base hit kind of standpoint right like i think he's playing way over his head right now i showed you a stat cast he is basically blue in every like hitting category and yet he's 
except yeah. for like batting average. Like so, no exit velocity, no barrel rate. Like not there's absolutely nothing going for him except he keeps getting hits. So, so I would say I would say I mean 5800 for Duran if I'm stacking Red Sox. Sure. Pay up if I'm stacking Judge and Soto or using some Yankees there. Yep. I'll pass on Quan. I'm going to pass on Bellinger, lefty lefty crime, and then I'll look to Jordan. Sure. I like that. Um, we know Lewis Robert obviously has some power there. Tyler O'Neill's got power there. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Buxton against Mayeda. Buxton's been pretty good. He's 44. Uh, Merrill, again, if you're not in on Scherzer, obviously Jackson Merrill's been very uh, good. I'm lo- I'm locking him into my lineups, man. Okay. I, he might not make our lineup here. I love what Jackson Merrill's doing. I love what he's doing right All now. the rookies, uh, we were talking about this the other day. You know, they all got off the kind of slow starts. Torrio, Merrill, Lankford. Um, and now they're all locked in for the second half of this year, it seems like. Uh, about the uh, make a lot of people seem right that put some investments in there for sure. So uh, mm-hmm. you got Merrill. Uh, Weiler's really struggled since coming off the IL, um, you know, but starting to pick it up a little bit of late. So maybe there's some more opportunities. He was second in um, betting odds for the American League Rookie of the Year before he went down with his injury. So, uh, you know, maybe if he starts to regain some of that form, uh, you can take a look. Uh, how about 4K and under? Um, I mean, listen, the lefty Marsh against Tyone is fine if you want to maybe like stack or use some Phillies there, but he's been kind of on the cold side lately. Um, I don't mind using Wyatt Langford, who is, I mean, that dude hit 306 for the month of June with like, you know, three home runs, 22 RBI and six stolen bases. So ended the month with the cycle. So (laughs) ended the month with the cycle. What a punctuation mark. Right? Like, so. Uh, yeah. George Springer, if you're not into Framber Valdez, George Springer is another guy who's just been white hot over like the last eight or nine days. Yeah. I would love to know if they did anything different with him to get him as locked in as he is, but four homers, 13 RBIs over the last 10, 360 batting average after being droppable, you know, in seasonal, the point that he's all the way down here to 38. Um, you have the Cincinnati outfield, Fraley, obviously 37 lefty bat there. Mentioned Sedan already. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Right? We're like, yeah, mm, yeah, ooh, uh, yeah, yeah. Not, a, not a lot down here. There's Mitchell. really not a whole lot of value down here. Chaz McCormick, maybe, if you wanted to throw down there if you wanted to stack in texas leody Tavares at 2800 sure but there is nothing oh how about david doll i was gonna if say you... david dolls been... i just i just got to him right yeah. Dave, david doll lefty uh, bat against tyone you also have uh derrick hill here who's been hitting home runs yep at 2500 against uh, king maybe all right uh, well, but it's getting a little interesting now that's probably that's i think that's where we're at um, all right, let's <laughs> let's build. We don't have to use Scherzer. That's fine. Um, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Over lively, or over tie on? Um, over tie on works for me. Okay, over tie on. Uh, catcher here. I think we were just Vasquez twenty six hundred. Yeah, we'll just punt Christian Vasquez here. Um, all right, we wanted Lee, right? Lee in it short. Yes, Brooks Lee in it short. And then, did we want? I mean, we definitely. I think we're going to be able to do this. If we did Judge Soto, can we do Judge and Soto? Yeah. What about third base? Oh, because now you want to go to Miranda. Yeah. You dog, you you sly son of a bitch, you. And then we got Santana. (laughs) All right, wait a minute. I'm I'm popping this lineup in here right now just because I want to. I want to. I want it to grow together. All right, so I'm popping in Santana. And I'm putting in freaking Miranda. Gives us 4450 for a second baseman and an outfielder. Yeah. I put I, I just put the whole line together. You can look on the screen there, Howard. Oh, wait, where's the screen? Well, you know, my eyesight's not. I know, so, so I just blew I just blew it up for you. I, I, if it needs to be bigger, let me know. All right, wait a minute. No, I like I like Castro in there. That's for sure. Nope. I'm changing your lineup. I'm not going with Jonathan India. Not going, Jonathan. The 500 hitting Jonathan India out. I don't. Um, I'll go Castro at second then. I am debating. I'm debating. Let me see. All right, at, at 
4,300 if we did that. Castellanos, Profar, oh, Jackson, Jackson Merrill. Jackson Merrill. Here's my boy. Your guy. All right. So we're full twin stacking here. Full twin stack. Against Kenta Maeda, which feels fine. Can we do that? Can we have six twins in our lineup? Do we have six? We got no, we pitcher. We got Ober. Yeah, they don't count the pitcher. So we're good. All right. You can five stack the hitters. We got Judge Soto against Frankie Montes returned to New York. Uh, and we got a one-off, your one-off Jackson Merrill here against Scherzer. I, I played Jonathan India, but that's fine. All uh, right. So so Castro India for John. Uh, you know, we got Castro Merrill for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tie on over. We like it at pitching there. So 4th of July example lineup with a Matt Scherzer hot dog bet kicker. Uh in on this one as well. We need a we need a quality start out of Scherzer for me on that end there. Uh, we appreciate you all tuning in. Enjoy your 4th of July. No live show, obviously, uh, for the Thursday slate. Uh, we'll be back Friday, myself and James Grande at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Be on the lookout for the preview show as well for Friday's slate. Until then, everybody, again, enjoy your fireworks. Enjoy your hot dogs and hamburgers. We'll catch you all later.